Giant Size X-Men Magneto, number one, in which Magneto hangs out with Puffins, fights a Kraken, and does some real estate dealings. Let's talk about it here on Wildebeard Reviews. Alright guys, that's right. Today we're talking about Giant Size X-Men Magneto, number one, written by Jonathan Hickman with art by Ramon Perez. Now, I would say that this issue was not exactly what I expected out of it, um, but I can honestly say I wasn't sure what to expect out of it. The, um, the, the the preview kind of synopsis said it uh, about Magneto having to figure out how to deal with the human world around him, and I'm not sure I get any of that from this issue. He actually only deals with one human in the entire issue, and they have a pretty amicable dealings. So, um, in this issue, basically, uh, Emma Frost asks Magneto for a favor, and he goes and does that favor, and that favor is buying an island from Namor, and then they get kind of pulled into their own little adventure, and then Magneto builds a house. So, uh, I think this issue threatens to be disappointing because it's more setup than payoff. I think what this issue sets up is going to pay off farther down the line somewhere in this amazing tapestry of Dawn of X that Hickman and company are putting together. Um, so I think, like I said, this is more setup than payoff and that threatens to be disappointing, but I like the setup and the character interactions and the things that they do in this issue are satisfying enough that I'm willing to wait for the payoff coming later. So let's go ahead and, and dive into the issue and see what all is is going on here. All right, so first off, we've got just the, this container ship that Magneto is using to get to these islands, and he's going to the Faroe Islands. Now, I had to look it up because I hadn't heard of the Faroe Islands. Apparently, they are part of the Kingdom of Denmark, and they are north of the uh, of the United Kingdom or uh, Britain, and um, west of the of Norway. So they're kind of like if you have uh, England here and you got Norway up here, they're kind of like right up here and almost like the the intersection points of there. So kids, tell your parents that you're not reading comics, you're learning geography. There you go. All right, so Magneto is just hanging out here on this beautiful, picturesque um, island, which I kind of wish. I was there right now. It's hot as balls here in Texas. I wish I was on this picturesque island hanging out with the puffins. There they are. They're so cute. All right, so Magneto is there, and he's um, just on the beach, and this guy um, walks up and says, I'm not much for solving mysteries, and I really don't get much in the way of visitors outside of tourists searching for a picture or perfect picture to let everyone know just how adventurous they are. But friend, you don't strike me as the picture-taking type. I like this guy. He's been he's been in two frames and he's already throwing shade at uh, Instagram influencers that I, I dig it I dig it Magneto says that he is not and then um and then the guy asks, uh, can I assume that's your boat uh, parked over there? And Magneto, of course, uh, says, yes, it is. Um, he says, um, uh, islands have been an interest of mine for quite some time. Uh, I've been collecting them for years. Hilarious. Magneto collects islands. That's that's so snobbish of him to say, and it's just so perfect. Of course, we've got um, uh, Island M that um, he's had before. I think he's had one or two other islands. I think one of them was in the Bermuda Triangle, and then of course there's Asteroid M, which you could almost call um, a space island <laughs> in and of itself. So that line, I just I cracked up when, when I read that line. Um, he continues on here. I recently was asked to put my extra expertise into action and pro procure one for my colleague. There were certain requirements uh, regarding location, weather, un un uh, uninteresting demands, so here I am, money in hand. Now, what's interesting is, I think the devil's going to be in the details of this particular issue. He says, other uninteresting demands. Now, that could just be a, a, something included in there, just to fluff up the sentence a little bit, but I'm sure Magneto said that for a reason. Magneto doesn't seem like one to mince words, and I don't think Hickman is one to make Magneto um, mince words in the dialogue he writes for him, so I think there might be something specific written um, that he's referring to, but doesn't quite lean into, and that could be part of the setup versus payoff that I mentioned um, in, in this issue. So, uh, uh, the caretaker says that he's going to contact the owner, and uh, he said it could take a while, and Magneto says he is is going to wait. 
And so then we have a bit of a flashback here. We're back on Krakoa, and there's one thing I want to call out in this panel right here. I think this is the first time that we've seen underneath the water level of Krakoa, and it's not attached to anything. Now, I'm, I'm not like... a. Uh, um, I don't even know what the, the science discipline is, um, a geologist, I guess, um, or anything like that. So I don't know, like, you know, how islands are attached to the ocean floor or anything like that. But this one is, Krakow is very clearly unattached in any way to the ocean floor. So it's almost like this roving um, island that can presumably go anywhere that it wants, which is very interesting. And I don't know if that's ever going to pay off in any way or if it's just an interesting thing that we hadn't really seen explicitly um, portrayed yet. Anyway, moving on. So and then we have um, uh, Emma Frost. This is where she's asking um, Magneto to go get the island for her. But first off, they talk about, um, what's this character's name? Um, uh, Saucier, I believe is how you pronounce that. This um, mutant chef that Emma has employed in uh, Chateau, de, uh, Chateau de White Queen, whatever she's calling her house. And I, I, like, I think it's cool that there's like a mutant chef, like you think about mutant powers, like you've got, you know, our main uh, uh, X-Men right there, you got Magneto, the master of magnetism, you've got Emma with the, the diamond skin and the telepathy, more traditional, um, potentially uh, offensive or defensive mutant powers that lend themselves to, frankly, an action-based um, uh, superhero, you know, capes and punching style story, but then we've got other mutants like, you know, Saucier here who's really good at cooking, maybe he has X extra century, you know, taste perceptors or something like that, and then we had like a Jumbo Carnation we've seen in this one before, who's a, a fashion artist and stuff like that, so it's cool to see like, you know, less, I'll say air quotes, traditional uh, powers being uh, portrayed, and there's some fun banter about um, his cooking and everything like that, which is really cool, and he's, a, even Magneto's like, oh my god, this is delicious, which is kind of hilarious, and so, um, Magneto basically says, okay, while we eat, let's get down to the business. What do you want from me? And so Emma says, um, well, uh, be a deer. Or, no, she asks him to, to top off the, um, the, uh, the champagne. She says, so over the past few months, with the continued success and occasional setback of all things Hellfire, I've learned uh, watching how humanity is reacting to what we're doing here. And well, not to, po not to put too fine a point on it, but I have an idea. And he says, and you'd like me to help? And she says, well, what I would like, Eric, is for you to find me an island. Now, I don't believe we get any more explanation as to why she wants this island. Um, just that she wants it and Magneto agrees to go help her get it. And so then we have just some more beautiful picturesque art here. Magneto hanging out with Puffins. They're the cutest. I love them. Um, they're basically... Um, Porgs, like if you guys remember from uh, the Last Jedi, um, the all the porgs that were around the island, the island that they were filming on, I believe, is up in the same area as these islands, and they had puffins all over them, and so they couldn't move the puffins, so they just digitally removed them and added porgs back in, which is amazing. It's one of my favorite uh, kind of behind the scenes uh, movie details. So Magneto's just um, chilling out, has a you know a drink with the caretaker there, and then finally the owner of the island showed up, and who is it? It's Namor, the the un the, the reluctant mutant in there in um, the the Marvel universe. So he finally shows up, kind of has some choice words for Magneto about what he says um, about you know him being uh, called to the island. He says, uh, a boon, as a boon for diligent service, I gave the caretaker here an Atlantean Gresh to contact me if he ever needed my assistance. Need, not want. Yet, here I am, Prince of the Ocean, King of Atlantis, answering the summons of um, there's a stranger in our strange land only to find you just a mutant, less special each and every day, I think. Damn, no more. Throwing it down hard. Um, and then Magneto says, you kept me waiting. And Namor's like, uh, I'm a king. You were expecting it to be the other way around, which, yeah, I guess Magneto's going to throw his weight around. Or, uh, Namor's going to throw his, his weight around a little bit. And so, um, basically they say, you know, Magneto says what he's here for. He says, um, uh, the White Queen would like to lease your island. And Namor kind of opens up a little bit and says, ah, Emma, say no more. I understand now. 
I don't know what's going on there. I don't know if in some of the X-Men stuff that I haven't read, I was away from comics for a while, so there's definitely some X-Men stuff that I I'm, have a have a knowledge gap in. So if there is some history between Namor and Emma that would make Namor just kind of open up and say, oh, Emma wants it. Yeah, cool, fine. That I don't know about. If they have some history, maybe a romantic history or something together, um, uh, let me know what that is down in the comments. If there's a you know specific series I need to read the wiki on or, or something like that. Let me know what that is. And so, basically, uh, Magneto says, then we can we can come to terms. And Namor says, uh, that depends. Do you, uh, how, about, how do you feel about a swim? And so he says, I could take a dip. And so they dive down um, into the ocean. And Namor says there was a an exploration team that they lost contact with and haven't been able to find. And they want to see if, uh, he wants to see if they can go help them. Um, and so they find uh, this... Um, seal here and he says um, the unexpected things you find under hundreds of thousands of years of earth it's the spiral of the old king of Atlantis or Uhurai I think U-H-A-R-I Uhurai I think is guess how you pronounce it and he says asks Magneto if he can open it and of course Magneto's like oh it's made of this of course um, I can open it and they open it and what's in there but a big giant kraken I love this line up here from Namori. He just says, bah, a Kraken. Oh, why did we open this if there was a Kraken um, inside? There's always a Kraken. And so we get just a couple pages here. Uh, just some good, solid action. I love this uh, Perez um, artwork here. Reminds me a lot of, um, oh, um, one of the other artists. Not It's Arby Silver, Ar Arby Silva, and um, one of the other artists that did... Um, uh, House of X and Powers of Ten. I can't remember it right off. I'll throw it on the screen uh, when I'm editing this video down. And so, basically, it looks like they get eaten and go inside the Kraken. Like, it snaps, uh, it eats them. Right here, you can see it bite on them as he's, you know, putting, um, the Kraken's putting them in his mouth. And they, you know, eats them. And then, all of a sudden, they find this light. And then, we've got these, like, octopus, Ursula-style merwomen here who, um basically say like um what would you seek and they say we're looking for the um the explorers and they say ah oh, their their bones are around here somewhere so clearly they got eaten or they died or something like that and then they offer them a choice they say um see the spiral see the stone choose one and live choose the other one and die very much a uh, choose wisely scene from the uh, um indiana jones and the last crusade where they're picking out the the uh the holy grail there and uh, Namor is kind of like, oh, this is simple. The the spiral is the symbol of Urai. Uh, now I want you to tell me. And he picks up this uh, this creature there, and it just like attacks him, which is kind of hilarious. And then Magneto is like, oh, uh, -uh I I know how this game is played. He says, um, uh, it seems so obvious the the way you uh, offer one thing and and an, uh, or another. Yet I see three pillars behind you, so I choose. Uh, I do not choose the stone, I choose the other. He's like, I see you, there's three options, you're only telling me about two. I know it's the third option you don't want me to see. And they scream, and the two of them, like, two of them just, like, evaporate, which is really weird. And uh, one of them says, the one remaining says, trickster, fraud, liar, thief, do you have any idea what you've done? And then reluctantly hands him this key and says, do you care at all what this does? I have no, no idea what it does, and Magneto says, uh, no, I don't give a hot squirt, no, I don't care what this is, and so, um, then Magneto says, uh, what's about the island, and, uh, Namor says, fair is fair, the island is yours, so just going on in a little adventure there with Namor, uh, Magneto has secured the island for Emma, then it gets really, really cool. We see him kind of contemplating on this key, sticks it in his uh, 90s era um, <laughs> uh, pouch belt there and says the, eight, the lady asked for a favor. And then we see him emptying all of those container ships and building a house, uh, planting a Krakoan flower there. Again, amazing, amazing artwork. And we see he has built himself a little house on the coast with a sentinel head in it. Really, really cool design. Plants the, uh, opens up the portal and brings Emma into it and says, uh, um, 
you know, you can open your eyes now, and she says, yes, this will do nicely. Hopefully it wasn't too much trouble. Magneto says, uh, not, uh, none at all, really. Namor sends his regards, and it turns out he wasn't especially attached to the place. Apparently he won it gambling with some Danes after the Second World War, which is hilarious we get another view of the island or the the um the house there on the island which is again just beautiful and then um down here at the bottom we get another cute little puffin and uh magneto says well you have your island miss frost what are you going to do with it and emma says send invitations of course and then we'll wait to see who shows up so there we go that's the end of this issue so we got uh emma or we got um, Magneto doing a favor for Emma and then ending up on this crazy little adventure with Namor. So what I said at the top I think is very key with this issue. Um, I think this issue is ultimately going to be judged by the payoff that this sets up. So in this one we have something to do with that key. I don't think that key and the, the, the attention that was paid to it, I don't think that's going to just fall to the wayside. I don't think that's going to be um, an unrequited plot thread or a hanging plot thread or a plot whole something that's never resolved so that's going to come back into play and we still don't understand the full motivation as to why emma wanted an island for herself and to build an um a house on that island is it just like a backup refuge for some of the uh, some mutants is she wanting to do something that they're just a backup base is she planning on attacking from someone there no real clue no real idea what she wants to do with that yet but like i said more setup than payoff in this issue which i'm fine with provided we do get that payoff at at some point i trust in hickman and what he's doing with dawn of x enough to say okay i see what this is giving me okay i'm going to file that in my back pocket i'm going to enjoy the adventure this presented and we'll come back around to this when it connects to another story point so guys what did you think of giant size x-men magneto number one let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments down below thank you guys so much for watching if it's your first time here at the channel and you liked what we did you like what we talk about hit that subscribe button for me maybe also the like button and the notification bell before you click away if you want to support the channel more than that down in the description box i have a link to my patreon page as well as an ask me anything tip page if you want to leave a question or topic there along with the tip i'll make a video on your question or topic right here on the channel other than that i have a p.o box email address all my social medias are linked below as well once again thank you guys so much for watching and until next time we'll see you at the comic shop